the first things I usually like to do are clean up and then pre work I think respecting your equipment is just as important as working. Now, I'm not the cleanest person, but I do like to clean whenever I work out, which is pretty frequently throughout the week. So first I sweep, and then I'll do some sort of mopping, either dry mopping or spot mopping, or I'll do some steam. Now there are people out there with bigger garage gyms, but since mine is fairly small, it doesn't take that much time to clean. I find that steam mopping is the fastest to dry at least. Now again, other people might clean another way, but since it's fairly small and I thought to a routine, this is what I use for the routine. Pretty much like a ritual. Oh yeah, these are just four stall mats. So in the beginning they did smell, but after a lot of cleaning, they don't smell anymore. Or at least I don't notice them anymore. Maybe I just smell like four stall mats now. And now as the floor is drying, I make my work pre-workout. Oh man, this chair is squeaky. I usually just use half a scoop because I'm pretty caffeine sensitive. I mean, I can take around 200 fine, but anything above that, I start to get a little headache. Flavors. This one is not sponsored. Animal Fury Blue Ice Pop flavor. I like their flavor and I like how I feel after. I don't know how much I believe about pre workout very effectively working, but it does make me feel better. Better as in more awake. So I usually start my workout with a little warm up. I bought this Rogue Echo Bike. I put my own windshield guard with a black and a black a bag and duct tape. I don't really have a set amount of distance when I'm going. This is the warm up I go for. I go for more time. I usually do something like two minutes forward, two minutes backwards, 
one minute with just arms, and then maybe about a minute of full, like the full thing. I don't know what it's called. And then while I'm doing this, I found helpful recently is I can control my breathing instead of not breathing. So I'm learning to nose breathe a lot more. I found it very helpful. I don't personally feel that I have weak lungs, but I, think I don't breathe enough, which leads to more of my body being exhausted. My day has been pretty average so far. Hopefully you guys are having a good day. That's about two minutes. So now I'm going to go backwards. I used to want to go backwards and practice fine. Just warm up. Don't do it if it hurts. Going backwards is much harder than going forwards. There's a love hate relationship with this equipment. I know a lot of people use it for hit style. Uh, cardio training, but I view it or I use it more as a steady state Just because it's so hard and I don't want to do hit training It's just so hard. I don't want to torture myself. Now. Not at the beginning Then I'll do about a minute I'm just using arm Or more so I'm warming up my lats. I just pull it and I don't get full range, but we can just pull them off. So for today, I'm going to try to do a little bit of legs and maybe some push-ups or bench. I don't know yet. Let's see how I feel. <sighs> Whether or not I'm doing legs or not, usually I do some sort of lower body stretching. Just because it makes me feel better. What I'm doing right now is what I call monkey feet. I'm not actually sure what they're called. Or I just squeeze my toes. And then I relax them. Each time I squeeze, they go a little bit harder. I learned this from a PT clinic. I saw them doing with a towel. And I don't want to dirty my towels with my feet, so I just do it without it. I swivel my legs just to get them moving, especially if I've been laying down for a really long time. Not laying down, especially if I've been sitting down for a really long time. I usually uh, side towards a longer warm up than a shorter one. Just because if I don't feel good going into the workout, the workout itself might not be as good. And I'm working out in my garage, so there's no point of me shortcutting. I've been exercising a long time, and right now, there's no real goal, like in terms of one rep maxes, but 
I still enjoy working out, so right now I just do what I like to do, if that makes sense. Doesn't mean I'm not trying hard, but I'm not going to put myself, uh, you know, I'm not going to put myself in a place of higher risk of injury for no reason. Just some tibula, fibula rotations. As I'm doing these, I'm not trying to rotate anymore. I'm trying to keep them stationary as I pivot. Sometimes I find if I don't do these uh, warm-ups, I find it a little bit harder to get to the bottom of the squat. Sometimes I do these and uh, there's a little pop because I'm so stiff. Remember that popping is not always bad. Sometimes you're just stiff and you're just moving it. Now, popping with pain, that's bad. I like holding this bottom squat position just to let everything loosen up again. Get used to this bottom position. Now I know everybody can't do this. Sometimes you may need to hold on to a pole or a weight in front of you. After I get a little bit more comfortable, I kind of shift weights going forward and backwards. Maybe a little side to side, opening and closing. Then I get on my toes, get a little bit more stretch in my arch and my Achilles. This lets my back rest a little bit more if it was stiff when I first started doing the squats. I find that after I do this and then I come back and sit down into it, I'm a little bit more upright. I think of my body just adjusted to it. Now as you're doing these squats, hold at the bottom. Try not to. If you could, don't lean forward and keep the, the weight backwards. Not on your heels, but you're trying to have that tripod, like weight dispersion. My go-to warm-ups that are just sitting down are usually just what I call sitting clamshells. Just opening and closing. Super simple, convenient. Just need a band. A band. I usually go until I feel a burn. That's for me, that's usually around 20 to 30. Now do single leg ones where I pull with the other leg so this leg gets more internally rotated. And then I just come out. So I'm not forcing it out as far as I can. I'm just going as far as I can without overturning my hip. Because I'm just trying to activate that muscle. It's also a pretty good stretch too. A couple warm-up calf raises. I find doing these before squats really does help. Because I have ginormous calves, I know. My other go-to warm-ups are hip airplanes, where I usually use this bar to help me balance a little bit. I like in the hinge position, and I make sure I internally rotate, and then I externally rotate. Now some people will do it much better, but I feel good when I do these. Well, otherwise I wouldn't do them. First couple ones are always the worst. Uh. 
get probably a little horrible from the back. But I'm not too worried about this leg or the leg that goes out. I'm more thinking about the leg that is bearing the weight and then being able to externally rotate. Alright, now we start squats. I like actually thinking. But when it gets heavy, I probably can't face. I yeah, probably can't face the camera anymore, but since it's just a bar, we'll see how I do. I think it got a little better, a little stiff, but it's okay. My squat progression weight to my working weight has been slower because I hurt my back a couple months ago. So I just started squatting again. So probably I won't squat too heavy today either, but we'll get it back eventually. Alright, that didn't feel too bad. Alright, probably jumping up to 185. Again, not too heavy. Probably somebody out there. Lots of people are stronger than I am. But, I'm still happy with what I've done. Didn't feel too bad, but we'll see in the clip. Now we're gonna go 205. 
And then we'll see how that feels a little. Last time I was able to do 205 for about the room. And didn't feel that much uh, pain. Hopefully it's the same now. Well, I mean, I haven't been feeling a lot of pain. But I need to build the strength again. So I don't need to go too heavy too fast. When I did go heavy, um, in reference to my own strength, I used to do a lot of low bar, uh, low bar squats. And right now, since I'm technically doing it for rehab, prehab, I'm just going to do a lot more high bar squats. Just to build up leg strength instead of posterior strength. Which, I mean, yes, they go hand in hand. But, I uh, because I like doing high bar squats now, at least for now. Make sure everything's nice and tight. Go back. Get under bar. Too bad. We'll see in the clip how it goes. Let's try 225. A little music group there, but all in all, didn't move too bad. Yes, I'll do a couple of little bar uh, back offs. The positioning on these is just a little bit lower than on your high bar squat. I would say about mid mid delt. So top delt, mid delt, delt, mid scapula. Yeah, I know. My wrists are very backwards. I bought this calf stretcher recently. I um, mean, yeah, I use it to stretch my calves too, but I usually use them for deficit calf raises. So I'll do about 10 straight up and down. Trying to control the calf 
coming down, so a little bit slower than the going up portion. If you came to this channel to grow your calves, you're in the wrong spot. Mines are toothpicks. And I forgot to count. I'm just going to assume that's about 10. Put 10 for my warm ups, and then I'll do the working sets. I split 10 10, so about 20 reps overall. Then I'll do about two or three sets of that, and I'll do about two or three workouts, including them throughout the week. And while talking, I've forgotten to count. So let's say that's about that. All right, let's get to the real calf workout. So 10 straight leg and then 10 bent leg to try to hit that soleus and gastroc. If you don't understand what that is, it's okay. Just the different portions of your calf muscles. It's burning. Whew. Let's hope that was 20. Okay, left. And this is when you contemplate about life and how much it hurts. Because I'm only 15. And you still got five more reps to go. Or at least I think. We can get another one. Just to make sure we do 20. Whew. Now we cry. Here's another workout. Love hate. Because I can't do these for like five to ten reps, or I could, but I don't know if they're as useful or as effective. Uh, your tibialis anteriors. Full stretch come up and that's the simplest of it and now you just have to do it until it burns for me that's around 20 to 30 what did I say about that earlier Ponchos? I think so Now you think these are easy until you start doing very high volume and then your muscle just doesn't want to do it anymore. It just gives up. Like I think I'm 15. And man. It burns. Alright, 22 as a warm up. Then we switch. I've been thinking about hamburgers a lot. I really like the habit, but I feel like it costs a lot, so I can't always get it. Now, I could get McDonald's, but for some reason after I eat it, I feel so bad. I mean, of obvious reasons. But it's also so cheap, you know? You can just go and buy it, 
and then you just come back home. Oh, I almost got it today, but I just came home and cooked. Stay hydrated. I like in and out and I mean, some people might think it's overrated, but I mean, I enjoy it, so to each their own. I used to think In-N-Out was only in California, but I think there are in other places too now. Okay, slowly decreasing. Alright, the 15. I used to not know if these actually helped with shin splints. Splits? What splints? What did I say? Yeah, but after doing them for a while, I don't get them anymore. Not that I got them a lot, because no calves to split any of my shins, but, but I like doing them. It's like a torture, but a good one. So on a squat day, I try to hit some squats, obviously, so some glutes, quads, hamstring, yeah, that's, that's, that's not a hamstring. Calves and tibs. And then I'll have another day that would just be posterior chain. So I'll do hamstrings then with glutes again and then lower back. And I also combine my lower back with my core workouts. So everything gets hit uh, overlappingly. Not that hamstrings didn't get hit at all today, but they weren't the focus. So for these, even if it doesn't look like it, I'm very trying, very trying. My English is going out the window, but I'm trying hard to control the down. And at my very last set, I like to be a little bit more explosive upwards and then slowly bring it down. The first sets, I don't go up very fast because I just want to get my body used to the motion and the weight. A little change of plans. I'm probably gonna do some push ups and then I'm gonna do some arms. So look at these thicks. I need to go a little. Ooh, I wonder if you heard both my wrists pop there. It's a nice little warm up. Probably going to do a superset of bicep curls and then tricep skiers or pushback. I don't know what you can call them whenever you want. I just call them skiers. So, again, since this is the first set. I'm just trying to warm them up. I've done a lot of bicep exercises. 
I always just come back to these because they're super simple and I guess effective. A variation of hammer curls as well. And I do a lot of pulling uh, during my back workouts. So that usually gets them too. And I'm not looking for like huge gains. Since I play badminton, so I can't be too huge or else I'll be very bulky and slow. Now I'm not trying to be, well I'm not trying to optimize badminton either, but I'd like it if I could do both at least above average. So for these I'm trying to think about it as a pendulum the top squeezing and then as it comes down I'm thinking about controlling it. I don't know how many that was. That was warm up. I also do them at pretty low weight. Oh that was about 10 pounds. Because I cannot do more. I'm too weak for that. Going up about five pounds each side, so about 15. Not about, it is 15. I don't know what I'm talking about. Hammer curls now. You know, recently I've been, I watched Jujutsu Kaisen, JJK, season two. Man, that was a good season two. It's not over yet, but I caught up, or I binged one whole night and I watched 26 episodes, I think. But what a binge that was. Now at first I was just going to watch a couple episodes and then it got so good. So fast. Those animators, they're doing a good job. Great job. Lately these have been one of my favorite tricep exercises. So it's just eccentric. I'll step on something, make sure my back is tight, and I'll just slowly lower myself down. Now step back up. Well, these are one of my favorites, but lately I have not been doing them because it's so inconvenient for me to put this up. I'm that lazy. But I find the, thing that I, the things that I use most in the gym are already set up and the most convenient. Like, for example, I almost never use this so as stretcher. I use it time to time, but I don't know if you can tell, but there's a lot of dust here. I used to use it a lot because I had tight hamstrings, not hamstrings, hip flexors, but then I just trained them and then they got better. I used to sit for a really long time when I had classes, but now that I don't, they're not as tight. But the most inconvenient thing that, I've, that I have right now is this tricep dip bar. Not that it's super inconvenient, I'm just super lazy. And that's one thing I guess that's good about uh, commercial gyms, it's because all the equipment is already there. You just have to share it. 
I don't like people. Well, I mean, I like my friends. But, in general, I probably wouldn't go out of my way to interact with a bunch of other people. I guess in that way, I am an introvert. Because my social battery gets drained quickly. Or maybe my tolerance is just low now, as I've gotten older. I find a lot of people neglect the cool down, but I feel like it's just as important as the warm up or the workout itself. Personally, I feel like I'm less sore the next day and that I can do more again. Now, you don't have to foam roll, but I like foam rolling, especially because it lets me feel if there's any tight muscles or any knots. And I can just slowly roll over them. You don't have to roll for like two minutes or five minutes. Just until you're comfortable. Hopefully this hangout wasn't too boring. Just the first one, I didn't know what to say. I just kind of took it. Or I just kind of started recording. And if I spoke a little bit too little, my bad. Hopefully I'll have more to say in the future. Generally that was a, a basic leg workout day. Not too hard, not too intense. I still want to do other things. And as you can tell, my trunk of thighs need a lot more work. More twig size. <sighs> Have you ever seen Groot? My legs are like baby Groot. Just his arms, not even his body. <sighs> but I still love doing legs. My upper body is so weak. That doesn't mean that I should do more of it. Man, it's gone so cold lately. So much more of my joints are popping. <sighs> yeah, earlier I was doing a... Earlier I was doing bicep curls. I wonder what your favorite bicep workouts are. That way I can also try them. Variation is nice too. Progression is better, but variation is nice. Just so you can be interested in what you're doing and being consistent. Consistent and progression, both things that you want. I think being consistent is the harder one for most people because anybody can work out really hard for one day. And that's why I'm working out for the enjoyment of it. Not too intensive, just so I can enjoy it and then keep doing it for the long run. Thanks for hanging out. The first day 
Hopefully I can keep making these. If I can make them better. See you later.